In 2011, Rafael Varane signed to Real Madrid for 11 million euros at 18 years old. And for the next 10 seasons, Varane would grow into one of the most dominant center backs in La Liga, winning three league titles, four Super Cups, one Copa del Rey, four Champions League titles, and seven other trophies. Rafael Varane had created himself a real legacy in the Spanish capital. But after a groundbreaking move to Manchester United and back-to-back -back underwhelming seasons, he has completely gone under the radar in the discussion of the world's best defenders and now might not even play next season. So what really happened to Rafael Varane? Let's take this story from the top. Rafael Varane was born on the 25th of April in 1993 in Lille, France. Varane began his football career in the arrondissement of Lille playing for the local club AS Halamens as a center back at the age of seven. After spending two years at the club in July of 2002, he joined professional club RC Lens. The Lens Academy was a huge step for him and it was the real beginning of his football career. While he was playing with them, he very quickly ascended through the youth ranks due to how much more advanced he was in almost all aspects of his game. His extremely advanced athleticism, positioning, aerial presence, and overall ability as a center back is what set him apart from his competition and in the following season he got promoted to Lens under 19s at the age of 16. Performances at this new level would end up being so impressive that in the following season he got to sign for his first professional contract for the 2010-11 season getting his chance in the Lens reserve team. He made his amateur football debut in the opening match of the season, where he would have a key performance winning over 90% of his duels and overall playing exceptionally well. Varane would continue to play a key role for Lens, starting in the following nine matches where Lens would only lose one of them. Clearly, Lens had some serious defensive talent on their hands and very quickly Varane would rise to the spotlight. In late October of 2010-2011, Varane was called up to the senior squad to train by the manager due to the injury to center back Aladin Yahia, this guy. To the surprise of many in a match against Montepelle, Rafael Varane was named in the starting lineup and would make his first team debut playing a full 90. The result was Lens' third clean sheet of the season, proving that the capabilities of Rafael Varane could be very meaningful for the team. Varane was consistently putting in unbreakable performances, showing off his speed, defending, and brutal slide tackles. And he wasn't too bad at scoring either, scoring two goals in his first season. Throughout the campaign, Varane was praised by the whole team and the media started to pick up his name as well. And that caught the attention of Spanish giants Real Madrid, who at the end of the 2010-11 season would end up signing the 18-year-old center back superstar for around 11 million euros, which back then for a young center back was a lot of money. Rafael Varane wasted no time in making his Real Madrid debut, where he would get subbed on against LA Galaxy in a preseason tournament. But Varane made his proper debut almost two months into the regular season, in a league match against Racing de Santander. He was in the starting 11 and was able to keep a clean sheet, and he continued to play the next few matches for Los Blancos, where he'd actually score his first goal for the club against Real Vallecano, with a flying back heel from a corner kick, something out of a movie. Despite having a few really good performances though, he ultimately struggled to have the same caliber performances that he was giving back at Lens. And in a competitive squad like Real Madrid, he instantly got dropped to the bench, and would only end up playing a total of 9 matches that season. Overall, his first year with Los Bancos was mostly just a period of adjustment and getting used to playing at such a high level. But in the next few years, Varane really stepped up for Real Madrid. From the next four years onward, Rafael Varane became one of Madrid's best players by far. He transformed into one of the most difficult defenders in all of the world at this time. His playstyle of speed, intelligence, and area ability, plus his positional sense and ability to read the game really worked well for him, allowing him to make crucial interceptions and clearances. Most of the claims of him being one of the best defenders in the world came to prominence following his performance in El Clasico in the Copa del Rey in 2013, where he played one of the best matches of his life, making several crucial tackles and even clearing one of Xavi's shots off the line. And then he scored a header to draw the match 1-1. But that wasn't all, in the second leg he would score yet another goal to secure a 3-1 win for Real Madrid. This incredible performance and many others was what got his name in the headlines, and he started to receive praise from many. But from World Cup winner Bigzente Lizarazu, this guy, particularly after his match against Manchester United in the Champions League, he said, We are talking about a kid at Real Madrid who has unseated Pepe, and Pepe, with all his stuff, is still a great center half. His performance against Manchester United and Barcelona was extraordinary. There's not much more to say about his playstyle other than that he was integral to Real Madrid's team. However, he sometimes struggled with consistency, particularly when injuries disrupted his form. From 2012 to 2016, he missed over 60 matches from three different major injuries, and going into the future, that would be a burden. But for the next five years, Rafael Varane was an absolute beast, and you have to see for yourself.
watching Varane absolutely kill attackers in La Liga for 5 years straight as Real Madrid dominated La Liga and Europe was a different type of feeling. But more specifically, 2018 was a crazy year for Varane. Not only was he a pillar for France in the World Cup, playing every single minute of the tournament, and even scoring against Uruguay in the quarterfinals, he played insanely well, probably the best defender in the tournament. And he also went on to win the UCL that year as well, winning Real Madrid's 13th title, and in fact he was so good that year he actually finished 7th in the Ballon d'Or list, which is pretty crazy for a center back playing in the Messi and Ronaldo era. The next three years he was consistently a regular starter and continued to be Real Madrid's best defender by far. But things started to take a negative turn in the round of 16 in the 2019-20 season. And this was the beginning of his downfall. As Madrid was playing against Man City, they would concede two goals in the first leg that ultimately Veron would be at fault for. And he actually went on to publicly apologize for this, just to show how bad it actually was. He would play his last year in Madrid in the 2020-21 season, but he was a bit underwhelming and since he had won everything at Madrid and things were eventually going to come to an end anyway, he decided to sign for Manchester United for around 40 million in 2021. This move was a pretty big thing since Manchester United needed a quality center back for a while, which made this one of the most hype signings of the summer. He made his debut against Wolves where he would assist the winning goal and overall he played it pretty alright. Not a bad debut whatsoever. But as the season went on, he was playing pretty good for Man United throughout the season, dropping solid performances every game. He wasn't the best on the team, but he wasn't the worst, if you know what I mean. He would actually score his first goal for United near the end of the season in May against Brentford, and by the end of the year, fans were pretty excited to see what he had in store in the next campaign. The start of the 2022-23 season for Varane was pretty good. He played exceptionally well against Liverpool and Arsenal in the first couple matches, and things were looking up for him. But in a match against Chelsea, Varane would take a hit and ended up injuring his leg, which kept him out for almost a whole month. But when he returned, he came back even stronger, and continued to play full 90s for weeks to come, and he even started in the EFL Cup Final against Newcastle in which he won his first trophy with Manchester United. And Varane was in a pretty good spot in his career, until around April. He would sustain another injury this time, his foot, which had him out for another two months. Overall, he played pretty good, but injuries had definitely taken a toll on him and it would show in 2024. The start of the 2023-24 season started off, well, not so good. Varane was playing pretty mid. He would score a goal against Wolves at the beginning of the season, but that was about all he did. Since his performances had been declining for a little bit, he was on and off the bench for several weeks, getting replaced by Johnny Evans and Harry Maguire. Come on. But what was the reason? Well, in general, he claims that his body had been severely damaged by years of heading the ball and other football-related issues. And to make matters worse, Ten Hag left him out of the squad for practical reasons. But like I said before, replacing Varane with Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans does not look like the best tactical decision, which starts to ponder the question of whether something deeper is going on behind the scenes. Some fans think there's beef between Ten Hag and Varane, but I doubt that. Others think Varane's facing some serious issues behind the scenes that fans don't want to know about, but only time can tell.